Uh. H to the Izzo, B to the Izzo. For Shizu, my Nizzo used to dribble down in VA. Was hurting them in the home of the Turpins. Got it dirt cheap for them. Today's episode of the Super Fan Show, I will be reviewing Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. It's a movie that is directed partly by the Lonely Islands. It's a group that Andy Samberg has with a couple of his friends on YouTube. Andy Samberg stars as the main character in this movie called Connor. These three friends who are good friends and they grow up together, they split apart, but two of them stay together, one of them doesn't. One of them becomes this huge, big, mega star. He becomes really famous and he comes out with a sophomore album. The sophomore album doesn't exactly do that well and his life just kind of starts unraveling after that. It's a movie that's told in a mockumentary style. You know, it has a mockumentary style of storytelling and we see the kind of ups and downs and ins and outs of a famous person or a star player. Well, first of all, I'd be lying to you guys if I said that this movie was not entertaining. It, it was pretty funny for most of it. What I like about the humor in this movie is that it doesn't feel like it's on time. It doesn't feel scripted. It feels, you know, kind of a little bit like improv. Like, they take a joke in a scene and then they take that joke further than you ever thought they would ever take that joke. It plays a lot on shock value. It plays a lot on, you know, really offensive juvenile jokes. If you're easily offended by that kind of thing, this probably isn't the movie for you, but for me, someone who's not easily offended by shit, I was entertained, I was enjoying, there were a few scenes where I was laughing my ass off in this movie, I can't even front. That's the best thing about the humor, is it feels unscripted. Andy Samberg is good in this movie as the title role, or as the main character, Connor. He's charismatic, he's charming, he has some funny moments. Uh, the entire group of Lonely Island, they all have moments where they're really funny, they all have moments where they stand out. And it's told in a unique perspective, like from a, a mockumentary type of way. I thought that also added a little bit to the humor, because you don't usually see comedies told in this type of format. The movie really did a good job in terms of the satire and in terms of, it really does kind of paint a picture of what a famous person would have. Uh, the life of a pop star is supposed to be or what we think it's supposed to be and it kind of presents it in like a, a make fun of it type of way like uh, satire so it's not all sweet roses and stuff like that being famous the biggest problem with this movie is the movie relies a lot on shock value it relies a lot on really offensive stuff like the family guy issue or one of the issues that I've had with family guy in the last few years after the shock value kind of wears off, there's only so many things you can do to make people laugh. And it just, when they keep beating you over the head with these jokes over and over and over again, when they really try to force these jokes in there, it's just not funny. And there were long stretches in the second half of this movie where I wasn't laughing and where the audience where I was screening this movie, they weren't laughing either. It was kind of quiet in that theater and that's kind of depressing because I think that this movie, had the humor been more cleverly written, could have really been a big hit. The humor isn't very clever, it's kind of just very simple, juvenile, kind of like so dumb it's funny type stuff. Um, I wouldn't say there's a lot of ingenuity or inventiveness to the humor. It's, it's just very, very graphic, very offensive, very juvenile, and it's, it's not very cleverly written. So the cameos, holy shit, okay, this movie has so many fucking cameos, it has so many people that make an appearance in this movie for absolutely no reason. That was fun at first, but then after a while it's just kind of like, okay, okay, okay. Every other scene there's somebody new popping up and there's really no real reason for it and there's no real purpose for it. They just kind of show up and then they're gone two seconds later. The cameos did start to get on my nerves. They work for a little while, but then after a while it just feels like a whole bunch of people are just being shoehorned into this movie for really no reason at all. Spoiler alert, Snoop Dogg is in this movie and if you have a movie where Snoop Dogg has a cameo that I didn't give a shit about the Snoop Dogg cameo, you have failed me, okay? You have failed me, your audience. That should never happen in a movie like this. Guys, I would say that while I can't say Popstar is a good movie, I can't say it's a great movie, I can't, I can't really recommend it, I can't really even say, but I can say this, it is a really fun time. There, there's there's plenty of enjoyment to be had in it. There's plenty of entertainment value. It does have some really funny stuff. The songs that they created for this movie are really funny. Those are probably the funniest and probably the most offensive things about this movie. 
So I'd be lying again if I said I wasn't entertained. The movie is really more of a guilty pleasure. And because it's a guilty pleasure, I'm going to give it the Superman guilty pleasure rating of Smallville. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Comment, like, share, let me know what you guys think. Are you going to go see Popstar? And if you have, what, what do you think about it? You know, what are your opinions on it? Thank you so much. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. Stay tuned.